Well, there was one that was in that for Pascal's triangle that I want to just uh, do quickly. Um, and then uh, we have to um, move on. Have to do about periodicity. Well, um, begin with the rules that we have an order to bring. Which is also assumed to be an order unit. It, uh, something is less everything less than equal to some moment, some positive moment. And we want, we want to show that um, by its state, that means the map from G to R, which is some uh, added. Form a compact convex set. We know the extreme points, and we um, know that every element is an average. The extreme points with respect to the measure on the extreme. Measure on the extreme. So the proof for <coughs> the calculation of the, um, of the point wise, the strict point wise order for the polynomials. On the interior of the unit interval, it's positive non zero if it's a positive non zero at every point in the um, that uh, open interval. I want to show that that order, that, um, that order of structure on the uh, polynomials implies um, if it's in the Pascal uh, positive form, namely the um, summons of monomials um, in x and one minus x. <coughs> and it was uh, needed for the proof of the first order moment problem. So what we needed to know was that we have elements of um, every state is an, is an average of um, points in the interval zero one. And so the state you want to know um, you want to know this um, Stream. What the other supply is more quick. Yeah. Now, I believe the converse is uh, true after the fact, at least in the special case of Pascal, as true for the continuous functions on a compact space, the continuous real value functions on a compact yeah, space. But the, whether it's true for a general order, maybe I don't know about it. Don't we don't need that. My point, everybody wanted to mention today was we don't need to know exactly what the extreme points are. You know, we want to talk to those in one figure, and therefore, by nature, you know, Pascal Pyro. So, the Pascal it belongs to the end of zero one. If you have a measure concentrated on the extreme points, it's concentrated on interval zero one. That's uh, exactly what the house first moment uh, problem wants. It wants a measure of interval zero one. <clears throat> so that's and, and true that um so it's that's just, let me just outline this. A number of people have communicated to me that they know the proof of being applied to multiple. But let me just outline it again. I think everyone should consider it as an exercise and maybe uh, maybe you know, put on their thinking cap a little about converse. So close by is a 
And if you have an element A, the arbitrary element of B, and an element A between 0 and 1, and every, um, <coughs> you know, you know, every, every element is less than some multiple of 1, but if, if you can easily reduce to the case it's less than 8 to 1, which is complication, it would be easier. And, um, so B is arbitrary. Okay? Um, then uh, we find uh, phi sub a as a state. So phi sub a of b equals phi of a times b, okay? Because a is positive, and the, um, b times b is positive. For, for any b, any positive b. This is a positive function. And if we um, divide by phi of a, well, let's assume that phi of a is like zero. Phi of a is equal to zero, then easy to show that. Uh, by A B is also true. And this is a state, okay? And also phi of one minus A is a state because A is less than one. One minus A is positive. I see. Five one minus A. And that's why on B that's um, phi of one minus A. Okay, well, this is now a setup. We have two states and a certain linear combination of them, a certain convex combination of them, equal to phi. Now, can you tell me what, uh, can you tell people what the convex combination we should take? Right. Yeah, I want to get phi is equal to. Uh, Lambda times phi sub a plus uh, one minus lambda times phi sub one minus a. Okay. And uh, for uh, lambda to be zero, just convex combination. So if this is equal to phi and phi is extreme, that means that phi sub a is equal to phi. And if phi sub a is equal to phi, that means that phi. Um, put the phi a upstairs um, and then phi a b equal phi a times well, that's, if that's equal to phi then phi a b is equal to phi a times phi b okay so if we can prove it um, get this this is a general fact of whether phi is extreme or not, that you get this convex combination. Um, uh, Vincent, do you want to uh, tell me, want to tell people what the lambda should be? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I can't uh, hear them. Yeah, so that... You're saying it should be something involving B? Half by A, yes. Yeah, because there isn't any B in the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you always want to start with what the very to hand. Okay, good. So take lambda by by A. And by a sub A is by the phi A on the bottom, right? So and then on top of it is which is there with phi A B, right? And it's the same for uh, uh, in one minus lambda. Will be one will be phi one minus a right, and, uh, and so you one minus lambda times uh, um, phi one minus a will also be phi will be a uh, phi. Uh, okay, so um, well, all right. So that's how, how you prove that. Um, Having you, you, you told me you, uh, you had that. that that's what you are. You, I, I think you know this. So, yeah, so, well, I, that's what my understanding. You, you, you were one day after class. You were working this out. You stuck. I mean, you, so you told me that I understood that you knew how to do it. Yes. A job. Why is it a? I am trying to say in these. Why? Oh, okay. Well, we also assume that uh, phi of a, sorry, phi a is not equal to one, but phi one minus a. 
Those cases are fine. Um, just like why it's phi of one minus a times b in the top there for phi sub one minus a of b, but then it's phi sub a of b, it's phi of a times b. Um, yeah. Well, okay, so well, I'm saying that well, this is the oh, well, I, sorry, the um, of course, I, um, I, I left out the um. um This is the definition of phi one minus a. Uh, I'm so that's phi b. The phi b. Oh, what am I saying? Uh, this, is, this is a. What's the definition? What's the definition of phi one minus a? You take um, 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 just take a phi um, one minus a. Oh, you 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 caught me at the moment of, of, of concentration. Yeah. So. I hope everyone else was able to figure this out also. Right? Okay, so otherwise it's uh, otherwise it's terribly confusing. Right? Uh, so is that okay? So I uh, one minus a times b, which is so we're cutting it down. Phi is positive. It can never be as positive, and, and, and multiply the b by one minus a, and it's, and, uh, it's still positive. So that's um, you get a positive number. Uh, or, or one minus eight, it's positive. And plug in uh, e equals one, then and you just get one. So it's a state. All right. Okay, so, uh, by the way, I would be very, uh, I'd very much welcome my, an essay on Pascal's triangle. And there are a lot of uh, aspects of it related to the course. You could write it when one could write anywhere from five to twenty-five pages so on Pascal strike. And uh, everyone would be the better for it. How many people remember my um, notorious uh, demonstration, uh, which is uh, a kind of exposition of the proof of the uh, classification theorem for AF algebra? Rishi, what was step one? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what was step two? The same thing. Um, well, huh? well, the opposite thing. Yeah. Well, actually, more or less the same, right? <laughs> so what was step three? The same thing. Okay. Yeah. And then you were finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's, that would be worth an essay too, explaining what the, uh, explaining what the, what the different steps mean. Yeah. Abbreviated description of the step. That's what they call it. Uh, uh, that's a schematic, um, like that's a, we call it a schematic diagram of the proof. I would like to think of this. Yeah. So you have the two um, horizontal sequences uh, of um, algebras, other dimensional algebras, but in direct sum. And um, <coughs> with any of the words. And then um, having um, two limit out and um, then the, actually what is in this some um, diagram is the k zero groups of the finite dimension object, and then it's a, a k zero group limit, and there's a given maps given an isomorphism of the inductive limits of these order the two order groups for the unit. And, um, well, then what, what you do is you pull that back to uh, after you pass the subsequences of the two horizontal diagrams, which exist and have limits of the uh, K0 groups, because that's what K0 does, it preserves what's compatible with the operation of taking an inductive number for the sequence. K0 
you take the uh, two sequences of these little groups, each one of which is a finite direct sum of copies of Z on an ordered group direct sum. And then uh, in passing to some sequences, you drop the arrows. Uh, which, um, Make the um, size diagram uh, okay. at the level of uh, maps between the groups. And this was a this was a um, already a bit of an operation. We had to, we, we came back to the more than once discussion. It was definitely an essay essay material. Okay. And um, um, then step two, which you do, um, you want to say quickly what step two actually, uh, what this diagram represents? Um, you want to go from maps of indicate groups to maps. Yeah, right. So no more subsequences. At this stage, no subsequences. Just uh, for any map here, you just, just drop the algorithm, map, which gives rise to it and even takes the unit into the unit, right? Because finite state, this also preserves the unit as well as the order structure. Okay, so um, that's a, it's a stepwise on uh, the lifting of the K0 map to an algebra map. And um, but the trouble is, since it's step by step, there's, there's no control on whether it's commutative. By, by the way, if these are the given map. You want, so want all those triangles to be commutative? That's what third, the third diagram is supposed to remind you of, but how you go step by step to make the uh, diagram, make the individual triangles without, uh, without fiddling with earlier triangles. Okay? That means when you're finished, you get a communicable diagram of um, algebra. And uh, it's, um, this means that you get um, That's that's very interesting. So, so, so what is the um, corresponding um, uh, schematic diagram for the proof of plot three distance? Well, we so first uh, look at the map. Um, we have the A and then the algebra A and unit. This is reduced to the case. K0 is more, uh, the definition is more direct, and the algebra has a unit. <coughs> and then we map from, um, we have the double suspension, or, or the single suspension. Um, so S of A, what's S of A? Um, Um, Uja, what, what is uh, S of A? It's a suspension. What's the definition of it? Do you have that at your fingertips? Yes, uh, so it functions on the whole line, which um, converge to zero. The values take values in A, and they converge to zero at infinity plus or minus infinity. And they take the suit one and quantifies the position. That's a that's a that's a Banach algorithm. We're, we're talking about Banach algorithms rather than Caesar algorithms because um, <clears throat> we've we've just discussed the relationship between K zero and the Banach algebra and the Caesar algebra. We had two standard definitions in the case of the brief. <clears throat> we need to use the Banach algebra setup. Um, and it'll, it'll become clear why we need the Banach algebra. It's not, you don't already have it. Larry, do you remember, do you remember what goes wrong in the Caesar algebra context? We haven't, we haven't really seen it come to life for the whole years. Do you know? It's a question whether you define K1. Um, well, so, so, by the way, 
I guess we want K0 in terms of item focus uh, too. Okay, but uh, that's important. Also, K1 should be um, defined in terms of invertebrates, right? Yeah. And the reason is that in the sea geological context, we try to do it in terms of uh, unitaries. And when you start approximating uh, the unitary by something, well, um, you won't know it's unitary. You just know it's invertible. And and you, you can't, you're not you're not allowed to fiddle with it to make it unitary. <laughs> I mean, there's a joke, a bad joke. If you it's close to a unitary and you want it to be unitary, just replace it by the given unitary. Okay? But you actually have to do it along a whole curve. <clears throat> And you want the new curve to be have a special property. What the property do we want for the new curve? We want the new curve to be um, so we're given a curve. Well, so that's that's jumping ahead. We have a zero a one to have to do k one to s of a. So actually, we also k one. K1 is usually my first for an algebra with unit. If it's a complex static algebra, you, you don't need to throw away the unit after because we, K1 is a complex number. But anyway, we're working with uh, SA, uh, uh, adjoining unit to SA. So, um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so if S of A is functions in A, functions of values in A convert to zero plus or minus infinity, well then uh, S A tilde would be functions uh, on the line which converge to uh, independently to two scalar multiples of the unit at, at, um, at plus or minus infinity, right? Um, okay. No, no, it won't be independent. If it's a, if you have a function converting to zero at both ends and you adjoin a unit, then that function is constant equal to one everywhere. So you multiply it by a scalar, it would be constant equal to a scalar everywhere. Yeah, so if you do the, put the two things together, you'll get the uh, SA uh, little with the uh, functions converging to the same scalar, like plus or minus two, which is the same as functions on the circle. Okay, so SA is. Uh, Functions on the circle, uh, which are um, values of the function f in the circle, and um, f of one is one. Oh, the lambda times one. Okay, so uh, uh, <clears throat> and what was the um, what was the lab? How many people remember the lab we discussed? Do, 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 we, do we discuss that? We start with a projection here. I suppose in, in, in A. And we want to get um, a vertical element, right? which is a, a function on the whole line. And um, at infinity, it should be plus, it should be plus one. Well, we could take constant equal to one everywhere. If P is zero, I guess we will take constant equal to one everywhere. And do you, do you have a suggestion? P times S plus one minus P. Yeah. Yeah, that was the that was the um, that was definitely the fun. P, P times uh, now P belongs to A. P times Z, Z of course is the function. Z is Z is Z equals Z. Yes, Z is the function Z equals Z. Or Z is on the circle. It's just a point on the circle. Sometimes you use Z for the whole complex, a point in the whole complex plane. 
Well, we will maybe later, but today it's just a point on the unit circle. Pz always a full knot, it'll be um, prefix z, pz will be an a. But if you um, if z is equal to one, no, yes, z is equal to one, it's not a it's not a scalar multiple of the unit. That's why we do what um, uh, Abigail suggested. If z is equal to one, then this is just one. So uh, on the circle, we got a function from the values in, um, in A. And A has a unit. This is the unit of A. <clears throat> well, it's one minus P means the quantum function on the circle constant equal one minus P. And this is the function on the circle that P times Z. Okay. And um, well, it's an exercise to show that this uh, gives us a map from uh, K0A to K1 of um, SA. Yeah. Okay. That would be good for that would be good for um, a large part, a good part of one week's homework. Okay. <clears throat> Have to show it so uh, if two projections are equivalent, if we have a very fundamental semi group to begin with, two projections are equivalent, then the two uh, invertibles, of course, this is invertible, the invertible element. So that's a equivalent. And the two, the two invertible elements are negative and the two invertible elements. <coughs> and then they have to show it's added. In K1 of those two vertical elements, the, the composition of K1, composition K1, that's the uh, image. So, oh, <clears throat> so we want to get a map, a group map of K0 of the algebra K1. Okay. okay, so that's the, I guess that's the first step getting the. Um, and we have the group, then we have the map of level groups. Group map, okay. Step two there. And step three. Uh, okay, so I, I want to have a periodic um, periodic diagram, especially in this very distant. The third, the third schematic, uh, third part of the schematic diagram is an arrow which um, has a group map. We want to prove the sutra. Yes, you can just write it like this. That's the sign group I mean, that we project. That's the schematic structure. <coughs> So what does three vector mean? Three vector means we have a class. We have a class of something. This is a class which has sort of so we have a function. Here's the circle. And then here is a path, a okay, closed path, which um, I guess we should start at um, at one. So here it's equal to one. These are these are invertible elements of A, except at the uh, this point, the continuous function of the invertible elements of A at this point will not be one. That's an invertible element. Especially It might be a non-zero scalar, but then you just multiply through by the whole non-zero scalar, the inverse of the whole non-zero scalar. So. And that, that, that doesn't check the K1 class because K1 is 
unit or vertebrals and circular connections. Vertebrals, not necessarily in the circle, but vertebrals in the complex plane. Non zero points in the complex plane are connected. Okay, so we have a given a path of the vertebrals, and we want to um, show it in this, in this group, K1 group, it's equal to something coming from the uh, from this map between groups. Um, well, this is on the semi group, right? It's it sounds like a semi group in the point. Otherwise, um, if it's something in the group, then you go into, uh, well, actually, it might be, um, this might be a projection in some matrix algebra, in which case, this would be the, um, this would be the unit of that matrix algebra. So um, we want to get. Um, we want to show that, that this is. Um, it comes from two different things like this in matrix. So if I take the formal difference. <coughs> okay. Well, that's the schematic picture. Thank you. Any questions? Unless you remark have any questions. <clears throat> okay, uh, well, let's um, first of all, the um, what we'd like to do is reduce it to just finding a single one of these maps, okay? okay. We'd like to. Um, Um, just, just like for when we put darkness in the middle of the term sequence, darkness in K, K0 is the large of extension alpha, K1 of the extension alpha. If I discuss that, um, we, it was important to notice that um, we have some. Um, say a K zero of a, of a algebra, and it's not, and you don't just take two line points in matrix algebras, two arbitrary line points in matrix algebras, just track the equivalence classes. One of them, by enlarging them both by the same amount, you can assume that one of them is just the unit of a matrix algebra. Okay, so then with the unit of a matrix algebra, so if you have P is the unit of a matrix algebra, then it just maps into Z. Okay. Maybe let's say uh, Z, um, so let's try to find it in the matrix Z down the back. And then uh, the and that's it, because the, the P is equal to the one. And, and, uh, and it's Z times the unit, if you like. Z times the unit of the algebra. Just point down the diagonal of three to five. All the way down the diagonal in the picture. But then, if we can, this could be just written as Z times one sub n. Or n is the, one sub n is the unit of the by n matrix. And, um, <coughs> okay. So, and we have a, We want to show that um, an arbitrary thing in, in the right hand side is the difference of, of two things like this. We can assume that one of them is like this. Okay. But that means that you can you can get rid of the um, by the way that that's also the same as z to the nth. That's the same k one z to the nth times one. So if you have a production in the algebra itself. Then minus uh, n times z, okay, one. and then um, what you keep multiplying both the one you're adding and the one you're subtracting by z to the n, this one becomes trivial. And, and so, the, the, this, um, the, the given map is just multiplied by, um, by, by a 
by Paul by Paul of Jets. To the PZ plus one minus P. To the PZ to the N plus one. Plus one minus P times Z uh, to the N. And that would be just as good. <coughs> Um, well, um, actually, it would be um, it would be more of like you want to get rid of z to the n. We'd modify both top and bottom by um, z to the minus n. So that's to the one minus n. Like the, like the. So, <clears throat> yeah. so what's so, that, so this is just a single thing, then we have to get a single, a single uh, curve. This is a curve, but it's a curve. But it's an element of SA12. We want to get just a single one. Well, what's special about this? What's, what's special about it? By, by the way, we, get, we, get this, we, can get the Z, we can get the Z to the NC. So we, got, we brought that here. We brought it already. So actually, we don't have to multiply through by it. We can just forget about it. I mean, um, so actually, we just have to get one p z plus uh, one minus p because the other one we can get, and, and the, the things we can get are a group. There is once we know it's a group map, then the image is a group, right? If we want to get everything, it's enough to get some um, things that are differences are and then that's the end kind of one. If you take the difference of that for the um, ones come just from the from matrix element. And you get everything. So we can and these we can get. So we only have to get these. Okay? That's just a kind of uh, silly diagram to use. <coughs> All right. How, how many people are familiar with diagram to use? Well it's a nice game. <laughs> just look it up, just look it up. Okay. Um, not to be confused with wild goose cheese. <laughs> Here we've caught something. Here we've caught something. What we've caught is we only have to show something like this. Um, comes from. Uh, but actually, we. Well, you know. So what's what's important about this? What's, what are the important things about this? I mean, is we can I aim to get it for a given path. Um, well, first of all, we have to be sure the path will give us this, right? Because uh, the path might require taking it from a different so what are, what are we doing? Uh, who are we to multiply through the path by Z to the end? Well, uh, that's, that's fine if, if we can, um, if we already have this, then, then we multiply through it, we, we know what to put. Suppose we don't have this. Um, so what am I? I'm trying, I'm trying to get towards the um, the, the um, sort of um, conceptual secret of the um, this whole proof. Okay, the conceptual secret, and it's where the um, vertical elements have to come in instead of unitary. Okay, the, 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 the um, so a, a priori we had an arbitrary path. Of one of one. Arbitrary path. You could say they're unitary, but it's not going to stay unitary for very long. <clears throat> and we want to, we'd like to get it to be a path something like this. Well, what's, what's special about this uh, function is function z? Well, it's a linear function in z, right? And these other ones I was looking at was z to the end and so on. Those are polynomials in Z. That's, that's, the, that's the secret. The secret for this proof is to approximate your given curve, your given closed curve, with, with, uh, which is just continuous, continuous um, uh, path in the group of invertible elements that um, uh, mentioned in the joint, equal to one and one. Okay. Instead of just being an arbitrary uh, continuous path, we want it to be polynomial, polynomial with coefficients, polynomial with coefficients in the L or in the matrix L. Okay. 
and that the endpoint should be the we still want to get you want to get the identity matrix. Because if we got well, I worse want to get a matrix of the scalars, okay, but to make it scalars and insertable, you can deform it to the um, matrix invertible matrices that are connected. One could be a constant path around the circle, you can deform it to the constant function of the identity. <coughs> looking for polynomial paths equal to one and one. And, okay, and what's the now that's the that's the secret strategy. Why does that why is that important? If it's a, if it's a polynomial, uh, well, first of all, it'll be a Laurent polynomial in the first instance. You'll have Z, you know, positive powers of Z and negative powers of Z. That's what the virus process theorem says for the circle. Some virus process for the circle is you can approximate by trigonometric polynomials, which have powers of Z and powers of Z inverse. And we, those are not ordinary polynomials. We want ordinary polynomials. Just positive powers of Z. That's when you multiply through by the by power of Z and get rid of all the negative powers. And that's legitimate because uh, the powers of Z you can get like nobody's business. Okay? So once we can approximate by, um, and those are, those are unitary, so the, the, those are norm preserving. So we multiply by Z to the end, it doesn't change how close the thing is. Or close the polynomial is to the given power. <coughs> so, um, what we want to do is get a polynomial approximation, multiply it by, then, then we know it has a positive a plus degree and a minus degree, right? And you multiply it by the uh, minus degree to get rid of the negative powers. And you have an ordinary polynomial in Z. But then you go to work on it. Okay, and, and um, so why, why, why is it you want to have, uh, that's, the degree doesn't really make sense when it's um, both positive and negative powers of Z, right? I mean, normally, it's a normally you talk about degree for polynomial in X, not in Z. But if it's, uh, if it's Z to the, uh, if it's just positive powers of Z, then uh, it has a degree. And the proof would just be by reducing the degree. And the idea is, <coughs> You have um, a vertical element, vertical path, and, it, and it's um, dependence on Z is polynomial with, um, with coefficients in, in A. And, and um, um, <coughs> but it might be, uh, and what we want to get is a linear polynomial. This is a linear polynomial. We want to somehow get hit the polynomial by something. So it reduces the degree. So we, and we keep doing it until we get down to degree one. And of course, it's got to be a process that doesn't um, get it all the way down to degree zero. It's a constant thing that has a trivial K1 class. Don't expect that. <coughs> well, and by the way, something has to give. We can't just uh, expect the polynomial to. We can't expect just to do something inside, inside the algebra. This is inside the algebra. We can't expect to. Uh, Work on the polynomial just inside the algebra, get to lower the degree. But if we go to matrices, that gives us more room. We can if we go to matrices, and, and so we put this in, we call this uh, F of Z. And if we look at the matrix, um, F is by 0, 0, 1, that's two by two matrix. F is then the polynomial in Z. Well, this is a two by two matrix. That's linear algebra, right? Um, what's the most important tool in linear algebra? Matthew? Are you familiar with linear algebra? Uh, Mark, are you familiar with linear algebra? Right? Yeah, of course. Because then, are you saying what to do? What's the basic, the basic tool? Have you heard of? Have you heard of Okay. Well, how many people have heard of Okay. So obviously, you have to have gotten in your office. No, 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 not, not really. 
<laughs> I studied both Latin and Greek. Um, uh, I didn't. I don't remember everything. For one thing, I spent a certain amount of that time uh, standing out in the hall. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sir. Sorry. <clears throat> I like to think my uh, my remarks were too precautious. <laughs> I think they were just. Uh, Or I was uh, discussing uh, important matters with neighbors. Uh, but okay. um, they were important. Um, I thought. Okay, but uh, row reduction means you. Um, uh, it means you you do something. It doesn't. Um, turns out it doesn't affect the. Um, the, the um, Connected component of the um, matrix, but it simplifies it. It simplifies it. Uh, uh, so, what it, so what you do is you, you, you a column reduction to you, a row, row, row reduction, row operation to column operations. And, and that's, that's not going to change the K1 class. This is a, still the same K1 class. And um, because the K1 is defined by going to matrix, this is how you do it. So, but gee whiz, uh, we're about to lose the room. But okay, but um, well, that's, that's how it goes. Okay, but the uh, row and column operations allow us to uh, to get rid of one, uh, at least one uh, power, the highest power of Z. And the thing is that they're going to leave some lower powers of Z elsewhere. Okay, or maybe at least a degree one. So we're never going to get rid of the, the last um, power of Z, which is what we expect, right? Okay, so that's how it goes. You can, you can uh, and then you end up with a linear polynomial. And the point is, why do you have the one? So it's a linear polynomial. It's it's A Z plus uh, B. Okay. But it's, if you plug in Z equals one, you always preserve equal to one and one. Okay. So you plug in Z equals one. What do you get? Yeah. Well, you got to get an equation a plus b equals one. That means b equals uh, one minus a. That's what we're looking for. So if we're halfway there, maybe we're more than halfway because b and one minus a commute. I mean, the, the a, a and b commute if b is equal to one minus a. I mean, the commutative Banach algebra we pass to what's generated by a and b. That's another reason to not to use C's algebra because. Um, the, uh, no sense. It wouldn't get a commuted to Cister algebra, just two commuting elements. Okay, but that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the idea. What's going to be the Banach algebra? It's essentially functions on, it's essentially functions on the circuit. It, function, it functions on the plane. And you can do elementary considerations. That's, that's how you can read the proof. Okay. Well, we'll come back to it. That's not the end, okay? The end for today. Thank <laughs> you.